Welcome college basketball fans to the Full Court Press Podcast with LT and Sammy D. This is the podcast that brings you legendary stories from college basketball's golden era and dives in deep with the current analysis of today's game. Get ready for the most energetic and entertaining college basketball podcast around. Let's get it. All right, Luke Taylor here, Full Court Press Podcast. We're in the flesh. We got my guy Sam Davidson joining me. We have a very special guest. Um, he set the world on fire by letting go the first coach of the NCAA tournament. And I, and, I, and I mean that very sincerely because I don't like people getting fired or let go. But we've got Dwayne Peavy, the what, – what, what did you say? You don't call me at this, the athlete. You call him something else. director and vice president. The oh. VP. How would oh. you get that title? Well, I think six months in, yeah. uh, I asked could I be on president's cabinet during my interview process and they said I had to earn it and six months in I had an opportunity to join the president's cabinet and be a vice president so the first athletic director to be vice president at DePaul so it's really good because you got a group of peers that got just as many problems as you have and you <laughs> you really get to understand what's going on from a full university perspective which I needed at the time to figure out a pathway to get to this point today. Mm-hmm. Well, LT, LT and I have uh, DePaul in our hearts. We both have some diplomas yeah. from there. Um, spent a lot of hours in the Well, actually, no, t- say that. I have, a, I have a degree. <laughs> you have a degree. But right? I had a house fire, so I, I need to get that replaced. So <laughs> so that's all I knew. I knew you were a DePaul alum. I didn't know about the coaching and all that. Yeah. I mean, I'm learning about all this. Yeah. We so spent a lot of time in the athletic center, and uh, one of the reasons I 25, chose. 2525 North chose Sheffield Avenue. Exactly. Right. Yeah, 2525. I chose DePaul back in the early 2000s was uh, just the opportunity of uh, college basketball. I think it's the greatest sport in the world. You won't recognize the place you come back. We're going on, on a, a total renovation of the space right now. We'll be finished this summer. Uh, we're adding locker rooms. We're going to have our own men's and women's tennis locker rooms. I mean, I mean, they didn't have those when you were there, yeah. right? So they built over the tennis. <laughs> I know that was so, a bad so, sign so, for so Sullivan ask, Center. So let me ask you something, because you know we haven't been back in, in a couple years, and uh, when you took the job, mm-hmm. okay, uh, a couple years back. Were you kind of surprised at the lack of facilities? I mean, you came from Kentucky. I mean, mm-hmm. Kentucky basketball. I mean, like I told Sam before, Kentucky cares about three things in this order. Basketball, God, and family. Ah, maybe bourbon or horse <laughs> racing. But, I mean, basketball is huge there. Were you kind of surprised coming to Chicago? I mean, we've, we, have, we have history at DePaul. Right. I mean, Ray Meyer, uh, Quentin Richardson. I mean, there is history there. I guess, what was your initial thought your first maybe month on the job? Um, I knew there were some budget constraints, and so that was helpful going into it. Um, I knew that I had to create a pathway to to get us to a point to be in what I call a big boy athletics department. But because of COVID, I didn't get to visit campus during my recruitment process. Recruit- so I didn't know exactly what the office constraints or, you know, that we didn't have locker rooms and some of the spaces. <laughs> You'd never chair in your office. I actually figured it out. I had a master key and I just went around the building. I was unlocking doors <laughs> and I was like, I wonder where all the locker rooms are. Right. I, I do remember uh, that because I mean, no one was on campus my first fall, mm-hmm. but it just became OK. All right. This is one of the priorities we have when we start talking to our student athletes and our coaches and our staff and facilities was a thing. You know, Wintrust was such a big ad from the basketball piece, not on campus. What do we need for every day? And it became the, the step forward. And we did a feasibility study on the basketball practice facility to allow us to expand the Sullivan Center that spring. So, you know, it, it didn't take long to realize that was priority number one that we needed. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk about a little bit about the last month. Okay. As the athletic director and vice president <laughs> of DePaul University, um, what's the last month been like going through like the timeline of a coaching hire um, in, your, in your shoes? You know, when I made a coaching change, which obviously wasn't the goal, um, you really wanted to play it out and see what could happen. I mean, think about some of the stories we got even at the Final oh, Four. Um, but once I made the decision that we were going to make a change at the end of the year, it was vital for us to, at that time, one, let the families know that are indirectly involved even even you know coach Stubblefield himself but I also had to do some fundraising to get us in a better spot whether that's through our facilities our operating you know just even having the salary pool to attract the coach and get our NIL in order I really start concentrating on that and it was 50 days from my announcement to naming a coach so that's a long search process but it was very 
comforting to know two or three weeks in, I, I had full support from my board of trustees to go out there aggressively and see who I could bring to DePaul to help us get back into the tournament. You know, unwavering support from my president and trust to know like, hey, I'll come back to you. I don't need you right now with me, but let me get out here and, you know, you know, beat the streets and talk to coaches agents and, you know, talk to coaches indirectly and directly about you know, what we are, because a lot of people had their preconceived notions of what DePaul was. Right. I had to let them know we're not in a rebuild mode. We're in a refresh. Right. You might have a great opportunity that you're going to pass on. And then obviously when Coach Holtman became more available, you know, I was interested in him, you know, before it happened. And then when he became more available by being a coach out there, I gave him some time after that, you know, because I knew that he was in a situation where he didn't have to coach. I didn't want to be rushing to that, but I had some other options. And as we start narrowing it down, if I look back on it, to be able to name a coach when we did and get out in front of the carousel that was coming, mm -hmm. that was a, a plan that I hoped worked. Mm -hmm. But looking back, it was pretty vital to not be in the middle of everything that has happened yeah. since, you know, that selection Monday, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of just it's been crazy since. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, Did, we give you a lot of credit for that. Um, and we've talked to some other coaches who have also mentioned your name out there with mm -hmm. the timeline that you have. Who who, who mentioned his name? No one mentioned his name. <laughs> I like no, that. He's trying to be that's, nice. That's I appreciate it. All, it's like, He'll I, get I, some I, gear. I don't know about here. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the I'll get timeline a bill. seemed like it was um, serendipitous almost because like, if you waited a couple more days, other opportunities right. happen. Like, it's... But yeah, but he, but here's the thing though too, and we we talked about this. It was a text. I'm like, well, they're, they're, here, here's the problem. It, when you made that decision, it's like, all right, it, he's here for a reason, and he's here to build a program. It's mm -hmm. not the let's not wait, let's wait till the end of the season, let's analyze. I mean, we have some problem like Oklahoma State just hired a coach, and mm -hmm. I mean, just the negative media they got from taking so long, even like Louisville to a certain extent. Um, you, you know, you obviously made the decision. It's showing that um, you are here to build a program like Kentucky and, and a you know a power program, which which DePaul can be. Like he was gonna say, gonna say, we've had coaches on that said like the job, like this is an attractive job mm -hmm. on two reasons: if the assistant pool is good because you need to pay assistance, and NIL. I mean, NIL is. I mean, when you took this job, NIL right. was kind of an afterthought. It was kind of like ah, the transfer portal, NIL, it's nothing big. But you see it now. I mean, it is. There's I, what did I tell you? I was talking to Coach Beheim today. There is for on the average, there's what more 351 teams yeah. on average. There's four players more than per four, team in the I mean, look at your teams. team. I mean, I mean yeah. <laughs> God. I mean, even our walk-on that became scholarship this year, he's in the portal too. I mean, we've got 13 guys. Did he the have port. an announcement too? He went to yes. Illinois. So I, you know, I don't know what. Yeah. So we got We got It's a tough. I mean, it's tough from a transition standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, I do remember when I made that decision, wondering because this being the first year that everyone is eligible for the portal, yeah. right? That maybe this is going to be something that people are going to study and I hope it doesn't become a trend because I, I really believe in giving a longer leash to coaches. Mm -hmm. um, I think our situation was different. You know, I hate that we didn't have those resources available right. when we hired coach Stubblefield three years ago, but keep in mind the transfer portal hadn't even started yet. NIL didn't even get adopted to that summer. We we're going into a totally different approach. And the goal was to build all these assets up to this point. So that way, if we had success in three years, I'm renewing my coach. We have, we're not losing them and going behind. So those facility pieces, the operating, we were building to this point. And then now we just had to turn the switch for the coaches pool, mm -hmm. you know, for the head coach and his assistants and the NIL piece, right? It's hard. It's hard to raise money. We started a collective last February. We're on a 12 game losing streak, right? So you can't raise money. <laughs> Right, and so that was the hardest part when we were going through it this year. What was the where was the light at the end of the tunnel? And and I even being up front with coach, it was like, I don't know how we can get better. Next year is going to be even harder. Yeah. And so, I think having that opportunity where uniquely I was raising nil money to hire a coach versus it's like the chicken versus the, egg, the right? rosters yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. It was to hire a coach, and so that was a unique thing where we were able to have real good conversations where. Maybe there were some donors who were like, well, we'll see who a coach you hire and how that goes. And I said, it'll be a different coach. Right. It'll be a different coach if we're yeah. waiting. I have a chance to impact to get a – if we're going to get a high major coach, we got to get this fixed right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Talk yeah. about the uh, the DePaul brand. Mm -hmm. As an athletic director, you're a really good marketer. I know you really believe in the D Dream Big program mm -hmm. and like what that represents, not just to the university, but the whole city of Chicago. Well, I mean, that was one of the things that attracted me. Um, you know, I watched DePaul basketball even back in Birmingham, Alabama, because I had WGN, yeah. right? And everybody, it's got a. It's funny when I even walk around, there'll be people that say, "Oh, you know, DePaul basketball school. You know, y'all really good in basketball." People that don't even watch basketball, yep. that brand, yep. that success lasts so long, right? So we still have an opportunity. Mm -hmm. There's still generations that grew up watching it. But if we don't act fast, we're going to lose it. And being that front porch of the university, mm -hmm. where we know that we can attract more prospective students to the university to show what my colleagues, you know, what our deans, you know, what our faculty and staff, our administration is doing on campus. A lot of people haven't been to Lincoln Park, right? This is an opportunity for us to really shine and give some return on the investment the university is making because the brand element, the marketing element, we had 1.8 billion impressions worldwide when we announced Chris Holtman on the Thursday during the Big East tournament. 1.8 billion with a B from I a coach's it. announcement. Yeah. And a lot of that was, all right, the combination of a brand of Ohio State coach, DePaul yep. people recognize the name yep. from the historical piece of it, a surprise element and doing it on Fox while we're having it in the middle of the tournament. And just there was a lot of scuttlebutt. People were talking about it that shouldn't even be talking about it. And keep in mind, that's hiring a coach. So mm -hmm. what happens when you win at a high level? You know, oh, what happens yeah. when DePaul gets back? Right? And I think really that kind of gave a sense to people that maybe doubted the, it's not just a fluty effect where it just fixes it right yep. now. We've had a brand, we are somebody, we're a big East Conference schools, we can yep. be sustainable in this. And you know, it kind of gave us some juice too, because now we're getting this investment from the university. All right, we gotta produce some return, right? I mean, we don't get, the pressure's on. Like I said in my press conference, pressure is a privilege. That means you have the assets available. That means you have the tools to succeed. That's, that's the fun of it. I don't have a job if there's not pressure. I don't have a job if it's easy. And I'm excited about where we can go. Uh, it wasn't a relief to get this over. I was excited about the work we were going to get yeah. to go. Yeah. Well, did it, ever, did it ever worry you from a PR standpoint that you hired someone that was let go in the middle of the season or not really? I mean, was he always on kind of your short list? Yeah, it was somebody I targeted, uh, mainly because I was – I always like. I always liked Chris a little bit because I was he's a Lexington guy from did you Nicholasville. Know him? Did you know him? We had never really met. Okay. I mean, um, but I knew of him more because when he was going from Butler to Ohio State and being a person that was from Lexington area, mm -hmm. people kept bringing him up. If, if Cal goes pro, this is a coach you should look at. So really? I watched a lot of those early years in Ohio State when he was Big Ten Coach of the Year, and he was somebody mm -hmm. that I kind of followed a little bit. Um, but then when the opportunity, you know, we had a job opening, I really started targeting some of the high major coaches that I thought might be willing to be in some level of transition. So think about it. All those Big Ten schools were adding schools, right? It was going to be, you got to beat nine teams to get in the middle of the pack. Um, you know, think about the SEC schools. Now they're adding Oklahoma and Texas yep. or Big 12. I mean, those leagues were all in a lot of transition. And the NIL issues or kind of being second fiddle at the football schools was something I felt like maybe I can target, sell myself as a basketball AD that's going to mm -hmm. focus on you. You get to eat first. You get to be in a Big East conference. That's the best basketball conference so in the country. you're not adding football. Right. You're not adding no, football. No, I'm not doing Is that, that right That's now. not the announcement? If, if we get back to, to the Final Four, then we'll talk about football, right? <laughs> no, you don't want to right. do that. <laughs> but, no, you don't want to do that. Um, right. yeah. But I think those opportunities, I felt like I could at least have a conversation, and it played out where there it was a reality. And talking to some of my coaching colleagues that weren't, in the search process, talking to John Calipari and others and realizing there was a lot of frustration amongst basketball coaches because the football piece is so, so difficult right now in the NIL space oh. that some of them are just having to do it on their own. It made me feel better that you know, maybe some people might at least listen or I may, you know, and talking to coaches, agents, I really found out quickly once the word was kind of out of where we were trying to be in the landscape of what we were offering. Mm -hmm that we might be in play for some different people. Um, at the high major level, you know, obviously there's a lot of mid-major coaches where to step up to the Big right. East where we know we were going to be attracted to. And, you know, I talked to some assistants and some NBA, former NBA head coaches. We had, a, it was good that we had a lot of great interest in the job, mm -hmm. but obviously having somebody that's been through it and understands the dynamics of this. And it really helped that Chris had been in the Big East too, yeah. right? And wanted to get back to that. And so I think it was just one of those things that just, you know, at the point you go through this process and maybe that 
having someone that's been fired, you know, has it. But man, I got over that really quick when I knew I didn't have a buyout. And I, well, that's, <laughs> that, that, that made it easier. Well, you know, right. the whole thing with Porter Moser, and be able to hire right. quicker, right? right? That thing was, became a factor right. that outweighed any of right. that. But that's the thing, like the whole Porter Porter Moser. I mean, it was you know in the media is quite a bit six right. million dollars. I mean. Six million dollars is hard to eat <laughs> when you're trying to build a program, right? NIL. Right. I mean, that's money you could use. I mean, we saw who was the player that wanted to go to Kansas, and uh, they were offering seven hundred fifty, and he wanted a million. Yeah. I yeah. mean, who was that? There's it was just, uh, oh, um, AJ Store yeah. from um, yeah. from Wisconsin. That supposed story. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I don't know how you play that game. Right. I mean, to me, the way I look at it, if you're looking at seven figures as a student athlete, go pro. <laughs> right, if you're that good, yeah, mm-hmm. it's time to go to the NBA. Yeah, right. And if you can't go to the NBA, that means you you're not that good. <laughs> well, right? you could be 25. Year, I mean, there's guys 25, 26 right now. I mean, it's yeah. it's ridiculous. I mean, I mean, think about it. You got one more year of the fifth years. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm anxious to see, like, how different it is in that 25, 26 season when there are no fifth years, because there's no more COVID years after that. This is the last mm-hmm. group, right? So. This year's fifth year seniors is the last group of those, so it'll be very interesting. The portal, all those elements, the roster construction. I've got a junior in high school. My son Braden is a football player at DePaul College Prep, yep. and his the, the kids on the basketball and football side. It's starting to really affect how many scholarships are available or the recruitment process because all these college coaches are concentrating on the portal. Yeah, but, but here, here's the problem, especially in the mid-major level. Why would you rec- recruit high school players? Because here's what happens: you build them. And then they leave. Right. I mean, now DePaul is a little bit different story, but now with NIL and what mm-hmm. the money's throwing around, I mean, we've heard stories from coaches where other teams are, are recruiting in the handshake line. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Coach Wade told us, Will Wade, who you obviously are familiar with, um, he was telling us that a player came into his office a day or two before, this is about a month ago, and he got this offer from another school. And you know what Coach Wade said? He's like, that's a really good offer. <laughs> it's like, I mean, you know, so it's like, it, it's almost, it's, it's not almost, it is out of control. Yeah. And um, it, it's not level playing field. I mean, uh, one person once told me, actually, you'd probably know Charles, uh, Gun- uh, uh, Charles, not Gunthry, Charles, uh, what's his last name? His kids go to school with my kids. I know him all from Akron. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Country, mm-hmm. yeah, Chuck or Charles, you know, he said this could have all been changed the transfer portal thirty years ago if they just allowed, like in non-revenue sports, a free one-year free transfer. I don't know if I agree with that. <laughs> it's just hard extent. to get back to it. I mean, because I remember the days when you could do it in track, you could do it in baseball after your freshman yep. year, and it wasn't that big a deal. Yeah. Um, and then it got to a point where I think everybody felt pretty good about the one time. Mm-hmm. And then a court injunction, and all of a sudden the rest is history. Yeah. And so now we got to deal with it. I'm a big proponent of the name, image, likeness piece. I remember battling for trying to build brands at Kentucky and getting to that point mm-hmm. of being an asset. You know, obviously switching seats and becoming at DePaul, yeah. starting over. I still believe in the young people. I still believe they care about the culture of a team and wanting to be winners. Uh, I just think we even more, we've got to dig into it and teach them not just financial literacy, but everything, right? Because they have our attention now. When we, we have their attention now because the money makes a difference. Mm-hmm. I think there's still young people that, hey, I want my scholarship to be a full scholarship. Like, I don't want to walk on, so to speak. Yeah. But I don't think it's all about the money for everybody. There's always going to be some kids that was always about that, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think that's – I don't believe in it. I mean, I know the young people in our program, they really do care about each mm-hmm. other. They do care about winning. I think you can build a team. And you think about these teams here at the Final Four, they're oh. all built different kind of ways, yep. mm-hmm. right? But it's not like best team money can buy in the struggle. Even the NCAA, NC State that's got multiple transfers. It's not like this, this no. all-star roster, you know, Spare no expense team, mm-hmm. and I think I think we still have belief in these young people that they still want to grow. It's just they are getting used to the transition a lot quicker than we are. We just got to keep teaching them. We got to be the adults. We got to be the educators. You know, mm-hmm. you come to college to learn. I rather them learn how to waste money and blow money now than do it as professionals. Right? Hey, they can start over. I mean, because they've never had it. But they, I tell you one thing: they want to listen about taxation. They want to listen about investments and stocks. Oh, they want to. They want to learn how to manage their money better. Yeah. And I'd rather them be doing it in college than the stories that we've had when people got money for the first time 
in the pros and never have a chance to get it back. I'm going to send my wife and kids, and you're going to give them a chat about <laughs> taxation right. and saving. I'm an accounting and, major. Oh god, just fresh off my MBA, oh, so I got to, I got to, I got to put it to use. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. That's the thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like yeah we can broke. build. We, hey, they'll still have a place to stay if they go broke right now, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, I think that's one of the more appealing things about the DePaul opportunity, not just for coaches, but for the student athletes mm-hmm. as well, because I do think that the money is there right. in the city of Chicago. Right? Yeah, I mean, the connections, I mean, a lot of people doing the sports business and, and different programs we have because of the, all the pro teams and all those elements. We want to be one of those pro teams that people want to come to and get an experience to, mm-hmm. whether that's in sports business or management, hospitality. Um, DePaul can be a place, too, whether you're out at Wintrust mm-hmm. and the connections you're doing uh, right there in Lincoln Park or Loop Campus. Uh, we're doing a lot of partnerships, you know, uh, within campus with our um, um, Jarvis School of Digital Media, yep. um, our College of Communications, our, you know, Coleman Entrepreneurship mm-hmm. Center. And in the Driehaus College of Business, we got all these great assets that we're using too. We want our student athletes to to work with our law school students on contract review, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. We want we, we also can hook them up with uh, our Driehaus School of Business people, like you know, people to represent them. They don't have to go big business, right? Right. But there's an opportunity to learn from each other, and I think the more connected campus we can have, the more we can enjoy the fruits of being in the greatest city in America, the third largest media market in the country, mm-hmm. and get DePaul back where it belongs. Largest Catholic school in the nation. You're dang right. I recruited uh, better looking <laughs> women in DePaul than at Marquette too. <laughs> but whenever I recruited, I'd always do the set because Marquette had like, 80, like 70 guys to 30 girls and DePaul is like 50-50. <laughs> I mean, I never had to recruit. It was a recruit. selling point, right? It was yeah, a selling right, point. I never lost recruit yeah. to Marquette. We didn't lose much yeah. to him. So, so you hired Coach Holtman yeah. uh, about a month ago now, or less than a month ago. What's yeah. the biggest thing that he surprised you with his first couple of weeks? <laughs> I think the biggest thing with me was the communication piece. Uh, he pretty much hits me every day and, hey, here's what I'm thinking about today. Um, you know, I thought with a veteran coach, I might have to kind of work my way in there to find their time. Right. I think during the recruitment process, because he, I could talk to him longer than normally, yeah. I yeah. think we came into this knowing that we were trying to build this together brick by brick. And so we haven't had a day yet where we haven't communicated at least by phone or text yet. But I'm used to that with, with John Calipari. So that's kind of, you know, my, you know, that's my speed. And so we know he's a texter too, so we can hit each other without having to talk all the time. But I do think as we're building this, right, you know, being involved with how the roster's getting built and the staff's getting built, you know, how do we, you know, I'm giving them a little bit of a whiteboard process to how do we build a budget together? I might can't get to 100% of where you want to be, right. but, like, what does that look like so we can make sure your strategic plan for DePaul men's basketball is in alignment with me so I can help you along the way? That's the crucial piece here, right? Yeah. And, and it's a unique opportunity, um, you know, and this league is so tough. We're bouncing off a year where only three teams got in. Obviously, Seton Hall, congratulations to them for winning yeah. the NIT. But we're pissed, right? And so we're trying to figure out how do we get six, seven, eight teams and in. And you thought the Mountain West was pissed with right. six, five, six teams. Right. Big I mean, East only got three. And I'm sure, you know, Georgetown and DePaul are not going to be Georgetown and DePaul from last year, yeah. right? And I, so, like, this yeah. league's going to get even tougher because that was some battles. I mean, UConn, they fought their way through our league, yeah. right? No, and they it's a, did. Look at Providence. Yeah. I mean, yeah. God. But, I mean, even Coach Early, like, I mean, his interviews today, I mean, it's – he he has not gone through one interview during March Madness without mentioning Big East basketball. Yeah. And that prepared his team. And, that and I'm glad UConn started. came back to the league. I mean, obviously, right. they came back before I joined, so right. I, I didn't get to miss them, but – it's where they belong. Their fans love those rivalries. Yeah, but, but, it makes it a big difference. And, and I think they were confused. We talked about football, right? Like, right. they're confused. Am I a football school or a basketball school? It's a damn basketball school. Right. It always has. It always will be. And it's like, you know, UMass is going through it right now, which mm-hmm. is they're going to the MAC, which to me, it. it's like, come on, man. I mean, they're one of the founding fathers of the Atlantic, Atlantic That's 10. That's tough. Um, so you it know. changes the framework. I mean, think yeah. about it. UConn's got two teams, both the men and the women's team, in the Final yeah. Four, right? Mm-hmm. And... That's not the first time it's even happened for them. I think it's like fourth or fifth time. Yeah. Right? It just shows you what they are. But you can be, you know, I think David Benedict, you know, we were colleagues when he was uh, the deputy at Auburn when I was at Kentucky, and we kind of kind of grew up in this, and now yeah. we're both in the Big East. It's kind of fun. And, you know, they can be in everything school too. That's the one thing. You can have that element and that attention that basketball brings and be good at a lot of things, having Coach Moore there from a football standpoint. You don't have to leave our space. And the way the world's working now, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot more independents come together to form their own league 
to mm-hmm. carve your way out. But, you know, that's for them and their fans to figure out. But, you know, right now we're enjoying them being a very – powerful member of the Big East Conference. Uh, we're rooting for them. It's a league that I love. I, mm-hmm. I kind of remember the SEC football days where everybody's yeah. chanting the SEC. It feels like that on the basketball side in the Big East. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're right at home. I'm glad that DePaul made that step in 2005. And now it's time for us to return a little bit of the investment that the league made in us and selecting us. It's time for us to contribute to that, that NCAA pool yeah. of money. Yeah, absolutely. Do you, okay, are you a proponent of conference expansion first for the okay. Big East? And second is, are you a proponent of expansion of the NCAA tournament? All right, let's start with the first one, conference expansion. So we're at 11 schools, which is an odd number. Yeah. Um, if the 12th team can make us better and put us in a better situation, great. Who is it? Um, but I don't know if anybody fits that bill for us right oh, there's now. There's got to be somebody. Right? I mean, I mean, there's a lot of people that yeah. would want to. Yeah. I mean, if I'm uh, an athletic director and I'm in the, you know, the Valley or the A-10 yeah. or, you know, and the footprint makes a lot of sense. And there's a lot of schools that wanted to be in when they originally created it. But we got a new TV deal coming up. Who brings value, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's hard enough, right? I mean, we're going 20 conference games. Yeah. We're going to play 22. Yeah. And what does that mean to our TV deal? And um, so we got to be very intentional about that. We've added a 12th in, like, men's soccer, but mm-hmm. not for – um, for all sports, and I think that's something we can make that decision as it comes. And until somebody comes to the forefront that fits everything for us, especially in the dynamics of travel and yeah. all those different aspects, I think we're good where we are. Uh, it's a battle every night, and, and I really like the 20-game round-robin schedule. And mm-hmm. I think it gets really effective because if you're adding somebody that brings the kind of value from a TV standpoint, I don't know if we can go to 22, right? It's, it's hard enough. You know, there's a lot of people want to yeah. go back to 18. You know, so I really like the 20-game round-robin schedule. We play everybody twice, and we have a real true champion. There's not a lot of those still around. Yeah. I don't want to – right now, unless it's worth breaking that up, I'm good where we are. So you're not like kind of like the ACC at SMU or the PAC uh, or the oh, Big No, no, I mean, but, you know, things athletes, present itself, Because, you right? know, and, I mean, there's always been talk for years and rumors that Gonzaga is going to come to the Big East right. or SLU or Dayton, mm-hmm. you know, schools that – you know, I mean, especially Gonzaga. I mean, gosh, I mean, I, what was Mark Few's been in the tournament, what, the last 25 years right. in a row? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, think about that from a travel perspective. Right. Hey. All the other things have to fit, too. But the good thing right. is, if you think about somebody like Gonzaga, they've got a lot better at soccer now. Uh, the, both their men and women's programs are really good. Like, they've grown. Their profile's better. And they're trying to figure out what's the best place for yeah. them. Yeah. Right? And it might not be. And so, I think, you know, there'll be some mutual admiration at some point, or it right. won't. Right. You know, and then we'll just, we'll take it year by year. On the, on the NCAA expansion, you know, obviously in a year where the Big E's got three bids, you know, I like to look at it. You know, I love the tournament. Oh. Um, you know, and I think it's so tough when, you know, you have the upsets and that cost us this year. But mm-hmm. that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think it's worth studying from a standpoint because these power conferences are they're so big now mm-hmm. that – that pathway to getting in is going to be interesting where it used to be at one time you felt like you had to have a 500 above record in conference. Yeah. Those days are yeah. way gone. Yeah. Right? So we had a 13 and 17 in Seton Hall that didn't get in. I know. Right? That's crazy. So what does that mean? The good thing that you think about it, when a team like NC State that might have, that wouldn't have got in can get to this point, that shows you there's a lot of teams that have a chance to win a, con- a, a national championship. Mm-hmm. Right? And so there's some teams at home that legitimately could have a chance. So I definitely think it's worth at least looking at, you know, what, is it time to go to 72? But, I mean, if you do – so they went from, what, 64 to 68? No, wait. Yeah, 64 six to 65 so all and then you, to 68. So, so if you go to – if you had four more mm-hmm. or even eight more, you could do another kind of mimic Dayton somewhere else. Another first four. And, and that would be potentially – but, you know, people are saying 96 and 100 and something. Yeah. I mean, like, now it's like, I don't want You'd to You'd have to get rid team. of the conference tournaments yeah, to but, do that. Okay, well, exactly. But, <laughs> right. you know, I, I mean, that's where it... it but but uh, the thing I worry about is now a team like... Uh, listen, you guys are Power 5 or Power 6, mm-hmm. but you're not the SEC. I mean, you're just not. I mean, it's... I mean, you were there. It's football. It's, it's, a, it's a super conference. You know, does it, does it feel like they want to get all 16 teams in the, in the NCAA tournament? It does sometimes. Same as the Big Ten. I mean, I didn't think Michigan State should have been in the tournament. That's just my opinion. No. And they lied to me and they won a round. But, you know, no, what do I, I know? I'm not, I'm not against 11 Big East teams being in the NCAA well, exactly. tournament. exactly. Right? We're, we're, we're beating the hell out of everybody in non-conference. We got the 11 yeah. of the best teams in the, in the country and we just beat each other up. That's okay. 
Mm -hmm. Right. But that's a hard thing. Yeah. Whether it's the committee, um, you know, that's actually something from my career standpoint. That I would love to be on the selection committee at one point. Right. And be careful what you ask for, because, you know, <laughs> I've worked year. I've worked for two chairs and Mike Slive and Mitch Barnhart yeah. working with them for yeah. four of their five years. I don't know what's going on because the fifth year I left both of them. I don't understand that. <laughs> but um, but, you know, and to know what goes into that. Um, and but I do think it's the purity of the sport. I mean, you do enjoy it. The ratings are through the roof. It's not really broken, but I think you should always be evaluating. And we've made some subtle changes, going from 64 to 65 to 68, right? It's yeah. worth looking at, yeah. and it will, we'll come out on the right side of it. But it's just amazing now with the NIT, all the teams that said they weren't going to play. Yeah, and, and then, I think a lot of that's the portal piece, right? Yeah. You well, move the portal yeah. date back, and maybe it's this week or after this week. It might yeah. be a different story yeah. because you've got to make all those decisions, and I'm – I might not play because I need to work on my roster, right? I mean, that's a different story. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to ask – I'm going to ask you some rapid-fire questions. All right. All okay. right. I'm ready now. Okay. So, the, so these I'll, are – I'll up a little bit. LT, it's fun questions, <laughs> six, seven questions. Oh, man. Yeah. You already know the questions. All right. No, I don't. I'm just going to write them off. Come on, man. Some of them he already knows. I have a master's sure. in uh, BS and not yeah. communication <laughs> at DePaul. I have a master's in BS, which no, stands for you know what things yeah. So you didn't get that at DePaul. You got Well, you got I actually kind of did. I had some great professors. I had some great professors. All right. Give me one word to describe DePaul. Blue grit. That's, that's two the, words. It's one word. If you look it up, Hashtag we spell it. We spell it all one thing. Blue grit. Okay. He's a marketer. I'm telling okay. you, can spell okay. it over and okay. <laughs> The biggest difference between the Big East and the SEC in basketball? Round robin schedule. Pure champion. Okay. Nice. One word to describe Coach Calipari. Innovator. Okay. Nice. I like that one. Who was the, the team you cheered for growing up, and who is your favorite college basketball player? I hope you like college basketball growing up. <laughs> I grew up in the football capital of the South. Yeah. Uh, oh, so who is your team then? Okay, we don't have to talk about basketball. Who uh, is your team? I grew up, I'm a huge Dallas Cowboys fan. Well, that's not college. I know. I didn't really like college okay. until I started working in it. I really did. I mean, when I got my job at the SEC in 2000, I didn't even know who was in the East and the West. Like, oh, until, like, I went through the interview process. I was so into pro sports. Yeah. And then I became this college basketball person starting in 2000. I went to a small school. Yeah. I didn't go to the SEC, but I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, that's and I got the media yeah. job for men's basketball. And I, I remember talking to my friends. I was like, okay, who's in the East and the West Co <laughs> in, the, in the West Division? <laughs> so, luckily, that didn't come up in the interview process. But I'm all in now. I love college sports. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm a big college – I was a big college baseball fan growing up. Oh, now. really? Yeah, I was a big – LSU, Texas, college baseball fan. You know, I up. used to love, and I, I might be, I might be a little bit younger than you. Is Ben McDonald? Oh man, I love those LSU, days. Man. I mean, he, I love watching Mississippi State and Will Clark uh, and Raphael, Raphael Palmero. Palmero. Those they are didn't like the, each other. Those are my times yeah. to watch. So I did. Yeah. I was in the college baseball. I was a baseball player, so yeah. that was part of it too, right? Okay. So okay, that's good. Who is your favorite college basketball player from Kentucky from your time there? Who's the Who's the uh, guy that's like, man? I just that's my guy. I would say John Wall. Um, I think that was that year. I was probably the closest to him, um, even after he was playing. Um, you know, he was like a little brother to me for a little bit of time when he first started with the Wizards. Um, that whole crew with him, Eric Blesso, and DeMarcus Cousins, oh. that was my second year at Kentucky. And we were I was really close with those three amigos. And I still keep up with those guys today. You know, DeMarcus and Eric both having come, some Birmingham ties help yeah. with that too. But I would say that group right there. Nice. John. Nice. All right. So they're doing a Hollywood movie on DePaul. And they need someone to be uh -oh. you. Who would play you in the DePaul basketball revital movie? So people keep – I don't really like this, but people keep saying that Forrest Whitaker <laughs> – <laughs> I could see that. I, yeah, I used bit. to have a lazy eye, <laughs> so it was even better. It was even oh, better at God. one point, right? He's, he's an Oscar winner. So right, right. I can't Oscar go wrong. I mean, I mean, it's a pretty <laughs> damn good movie. There you that's, go. I mean, so, that means, uh, you know, we've got a big budget, <laughs> right? There there you go. Either that or the guy from the insurance commercials, like there's the Allstate guy or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, so I'm like, yeah, some people are like, that's what people. Who played the president in 24. Yeah, people always oh, come up God. to me and say, you remind me of these okay. two people. So that's what I said. You know, let's go all, let's go for broke. All right, here's here's <laughs> one that stumped a couple coaches and, and other people. The song that best describes you. Hmm. 
That's a good one. First home game next year. Who, what am I coming out what to? You, walk what out are you walking out to? <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if it describes me, but I was a big crazy train person. Like, I used to come out to Chipper Jones. It's crazy. I'm a Braves fan. And when I was playing baseball, that's what I would come out to. So and you're a Braves really, fan and a Cowboys fan? Yeah, you were confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, growing up in Birmingham, that's true. That's what yeah, you see. You, yeah, that's true. We that's had no true. protein. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's they true. Show you the well, you did, game. yeah. It was called the University of Alabama football team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm, I'm roll tied too. I'm a big football, Alabama football oh, fan. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever see that at Kentucky? What? Roll tied? Oh, for football, I did early on, but <laughs> oh I converted. I converted. I mean, Kentucky's still my football team. I don't have a football team or a baseball yeah. team, right? Mark Stoops. So I was at least yeah. part of the hiring process with Mark Stoops and yeah. Nick Mangione. And so those yeah. are guys mm-hmm. I can still root for because I don't have teams. Yeah. Okay. So that's fun. You okay. Know? okay. But right. I'm definitely rooting for UConn tomorrow. Like, I'm Big East. You have to, right? I'm, I'm Big East all day. You have to, right? I mean, I don't think I have to, but I am. You kind of have to. <laughs> I am. And even my ex my ex roommate works at Alabama in, in basketball. So, <laughs> I mean, I got ties. Yeah. So, but yeah. I'm, you know, I know, I know where my bread's buttered. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, Sam, finish them off. Yeah. No. Anything you want? We're just gonna give you the platform here for you oh. know a minute or so. Anything you want to share with the Blue Demon Nation about you know what's going on in the off season and what to look forward to? Yeah. I, I think one, just thank you guys for having me on, mm-hmm. especially having guys that connect it to mm-hmm. DePaul and understand mm-hmm. where we've been and where we're trying to go. I think we're really excited just about a new era for DePaul Athletics. And that's just not with men's basketball and our coaches. I think our university, led by President Rob Manuel, just set a big vision designing DePaul. And the fact that our dream big vision can be a small part of that and maybe be that true front porch of our university that attracts new people to understanding the crown jewel that we have right there in Lincoln Park and Loop Campus. I'm excited. I mean, I came here with the vision to be a winner. And we've got work to do. But it feels really good at this point to have resources available and momentum um, to be able to go, let's go set the city on fire, right? Let's go, yeah. like, like let's, let's really take over. Let's become Chicago's team again. And that's the, that's the task that's in front of us, and, I, and I'm here for it. Yeah. You know when I think a dream big, you're from the South, is all-you-can-eat buffet at Ryan's. <laughs> that's a pretty good one there. That's dream big. Man, you I know where you've been. I, I, know, you yeah, been, right? I was in Arkansas for I a I took one years. of my staff members to a Waffle House the other day. Yeah. He had never been to Waffle House. I'm like, uh, he said, what's good here? I said, it's, it's called Waffle House. <laughs> 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 so Ryan's, I mean, you got to be somewhere. Like, yeah, hell yeah, man. You didn't just get off the interstate to no, go to Ryan's. No, you got to <laughs> find that. But, uh, Dwayne, thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to another Full Court Press podcast. Don't forget to su- su- subscribe, rate, and review. We'll be back whenever we're back. And uh, what, what do we say? Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for I guess all that man. stuff. So yeah, whatever. Five, thank five you. Five-star reviews. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, go Demons. Yeah, go Demons. <laughs>